the poll in tomorrow's uh, Irish Independent shows that 37% will approve the fiscal treaty in the referendum in two weeks' time, while 24% will oppose, and 35% have not yet decided. This suggests game on. Tonight we discuss the significance of the poll and some of the central issues in the campaign. With us are Morten Messerschmidt, a Danish MEP and member of Europe for Freedom and Democracy, political group of the European Parliament, Richard Boot, Minister for Jobs, Enterprise and Innovation, Pierre Starty, Sinn Féin Spokesperson on Finance and Patricia Callan of the Small Firms Association. If you'd like to comment on the programme, you can text us at 53131 and place the word tonight before a comment. Send us a tweet at hashfinb or email us at tonight at tv 3 I've done a blog on tonight's programme on political.ie and I hope to respond after the programme again on political.ie to some of the issues raised in the tweets and the, the texts. Uh, Morgan, before we uh, get into the discussion, a, a distinguished one of our distinguished parliamentarians, a fellow called Dominic Hannigan, who represents um, me the East, um, said that he described you as a far right politician, um, and that he suggests uh, he says that um, that your party has suggested that refu refugees should be warehoused in developing countries, that Islam is a danger, and Muslims are seeking to drive Christians out of Europe. Um, is this true? My party has been supporting the former government that uh, was it was. Uh, put out of, of office only half a year ago for 10 years and none of this has uh, I have ever seen that in the in the in the program or of my party of the political discussion as such so so no it's Did anybody uh, any any spokesman for your party ever suggest that refugees be warehoused in developing countries not that I am aware of no I must say well we have 10,000 members I cannot you know would you would you be opposed to such a of course a I would proposal. it's appalling yeah. and uh, did anybody suggest that Islam is a danger and Muslims are seeking to drive Christians out of Europe? Well, once again, we have, I think, 10, 12, 15,000 members. I cannot stand to count into what everybody says. But what I think is striking here is that each time my party or another Eurocritic party tries to raise the issue of Europe, that's what our opponents, the Federalists, come with. They try to limit the discussion on the real matter and say, hey, you have a member in your party that sometimes said some outrageous things. Why doesn't this guy, Callagher, actually come on and comment what we're discussing here? The, the ESM uh, treaty, uh, the fiscal treaty, why does he have to drag some, some dubious things from whatever past he might have found on the internet? I don't okay. know. Just one further point I want to put to you, that the leader of your party, I won't uh, try to pronounce her name, uh, said, uh, has said in a weekly newsletter, refer to Muslims as people who lie, cheat and deceive. Okay. How do you feel about that? Well, I think it's a, it's a, a, a primitive and uh, stigmatising uh, quote that I can't uh, compare with my party. Well, the, you, the leader of your party, this is Wikipedia, she's quoted as saying, that, uh, as, as saying in the weekly newsletter describing Muslims as people who lie, cheat and... and do, you know, do you know who write Wikipedia? Uh, it's a public edited phenomenon. The most left-wing person could go in and write that on the web, so it's, quite an, it, it's not a source. I've never heard such a thing to my party. And I'm quite sure that everybody said something like that, generalising about Muslims, Irish, Chinese or whatever, they would not for long be uh, a... a, a a high-ranking member of the party, okay. I can assure right, you. Yeah. you. You had an article in today's Irish Times where you... Right. Um, the, the thrust of the article says that if we approve of the fiscal treaty, that, there, that Mario Draghi says, uh, you quoted as, favouring a fiscal union, and this inevitably will mean that our pre preferential corporations, prof uh, pro corporations' profits tax rate right. will be abolished. Yes, it's already on the table. Uh, Draghi just says what everybody in Brussels thinks, that they want to have a fiscal union because it's inevitable with, when you have a, a common currency. You have to have one government controlling the budgets of all the member states. And in that, we already have on, on the table the suggestion supported by the two biggest countries, France and Germany, uh, on, uh, on uh, compulsory corporate tax. Uh, and I have to say that the so-called guarantee that Ireland had uh, in, uh, in, uh, after the second list uh, vote. I have no faith that that will uh, cover this. This is going to be introduced, it's going to be voted through. Only a month ago we had a vote in the European Parliament, a huge majority of the parliamentarians, even some Irish people, uh, supported this. That's where we are uh, heading with the fiscal treaty. Richard? Well, that's simply not the case. Uh, as recent as this week, uh, the various countries in Europe have signed up to the protocol for Ireland on the Lisbon Treaty, which states very 
unequivocally that Ireland has a veto on corporation tax. Ireland has made that an absolutely fixed in stone. We are not going to budge from that. At a time of our greatest vulnerability, I suppose, when we were seeking funding and we had no funding sources, there was pressure put on the Irish government, but the Irish government rejected that because we believe that the way in which we can deliver uh, both our commitments in Europe and rebuild our economy is through a successful attraction of foreign investment and that requires that we maintain our economic model uh, and uh, that is equally it's vital that we also vote yes in this treaty because this treaty provides certainty certainty for how we're going to fund ourselves as a state but also certainty for foreign investors who are looking at countries and I go to the boardrooms across the USA and and further afield and we sit down and talk about you know projects that Ireland is competing for, competing for against really tough opposition. And they want to know that the investment they make will be safe. They want to know that it will be committed within the Eurozone and they will have access to markets. You know, they want to know that Irish government can fund itself in the future and can honour the commitments we've made on tax. You know, so these issues that are at the centre of the treaty are very important for the certainty that investors need. And I think we've seen in the last 12 months a very strong flow of foreign investment. 13,000 extra jobs created in foreign investors an additional 4,000 jobs in the construction that will be associated with those investments. You know, this is the way we rebuild our economy. But, and but, uh, but Richard, um, they want reassurance that we will be members of the Eurozone and that we, they will have access to uh, European markets, which means that we will be re remain members of the European Union. There's no question but that we will be. Whether we vote yes or no, we remain members of the Eurozone and remain members of the European Union. They want to see certainty right across the board. They want to see that the government can fund itself at the end okay, of next but year. But just to the deal with those two points. Just deal with those two points. Just deal with those two points. Let me say what I'm going to say. The truth is that you know, Ireland at the end of 2013 does not have any certainty as to how it will fund itself. It may have to go back to the markets. And as, as Jean Bruton said, we have a choice between if we reject this treaty, it's like rejecting the credit union and throwing our, ourselves on the mercy of loan sharks. That's the sort of choice. This gives us certainty as to how we fund ourselves, that we're able to continue the, the, the recovery we've built. It also, as you rightly say, ensures that Ireland is going to be at the heart of the Eurozone, at the heart of the decisions that are going to be made, Along with that, we are, that we are not. No, th I think this is the very not point. We're at the heart of the, of the Eurozone, we're not at the heart of the European Union as of now. We have like France and Germany decided on a fiscal treaty and we have to go along with it. Yes, of course we are at the heart of the Eurozone now, but if, we, if, if Ireland decides that we're going to opt out of the rescue mechanisms that are going to be put in place to protect the Eurozone, if we're going to be outside of that, then we are distancing ourselves. We're putting the in ourselves in the list of countries that the markets will be looking at sceptically because they've decided that we will not have access to those funds. Okay, but this let's treaty be has clear succeeded. Though, but let's be this clear treaty has that voting no does not put us outside the Eurozone, does not well, put I us outside. I did not say, I said, that, you said, I said, you said that. You said that, uh, foreign, that prospective foreign uh, investors in Ireland want certainty, certainty that we'll remain members of the Eurozone and, we remember, and they'll have access to markets which yes, and, I, and, and I explained so what that's I mean. Not an issue, yeah. no, I explained what I mean from that. If we, if we vote no from this, we will be outside of the rescue mechanism that Europe has set up, that we've got the Germans, the other countries to put in money into a, rescues, a rescue fund. This was the firewall that people sought to, to make the Eurozone stable. And we would decide, no, we're going to stay outside okay. of that. We're going to paddle our own canoe and put ourselves at the mercy of the markets. Okay, now, that is uh, creating uncertainty for foreign investors and indeed for Irish All right. investors. Okay, uh, Pierce. Well, I, I, I disagree with Richard. The, the reality is that this treaty is a bad treaty for Ireland. It's a bad treaty for jobs, and you should be concerned about jobs. Uh, it will result in lack of uh, jobs opportunities here because what Why we're going that? to see, what we're going to see, is policies of austerity, not just in Ireland. How does the uh, how does the fiscal treaty make any difference to that? Well, it makes a huge difference to that, Pierre, because it signs. The reason we're having this referendum is because we're allowing, we're going to sign up to particular rules. We've already signed up to those rules. No, we're, we're putting them in our. Uh, 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 
in our in national uh, legislation, but we've which are not, up to them. We're not there, and we're allowing the Commission to enforce those rules. That's and already, we're, we've already signed up to all that. Let me finish. No, Vincent, we haven't. Yeah. We're allowing the Commission to enforce those rules. There'll be already, automatic correction. Are already there'll be already there. automatic correction mechanisms. There will, there. And there will, there will there. also be power for the European Court of Justice to find the, the find this country if we're in breach of the rules. In the, in okay. the no, no, just, oh, only only fine if we fail to introduce legislation to implement the the framework. No, uh, no, and that uh, is very have, clear. No, and no, Brendan Howland pointed no, that out. And you, well, Brendan Howland needs to read the treaty again. We have to. You, I think uh, we have to Richard, Richard, I, I think go on, you, let me finish. Yes, we have to fully respect the, the, the rules that are there. So what it does is it ties the hands of future government. The structural deficit rule, for example, um, that will kick in in 2015. At this point in time, the Department of Finance has estimated that the gap will be about in the region of six billion euro. Where are the cuts That's going to come from? True. It, it, is, not it true. is true, and I'll take you through the figures if you want. I'll take you through the figures if you want. The Department of Finance has estimated that the structural deficit will be 3.5% in 2015. We have to reach a target under this treaty of 0.5%. The IMF have projected without any additional cuts or any tax increases, our structural deficit will not decrease over the period of 16 and, to, and 2017, which means there is additional austerity required under this treaty, and no, you're tying the hands of not only of your is, own the government, truth is we've but already signed up, and you're through, afraid, we've already, to, you're you're afraid, afraid to point have, out where Pierce, the we additional have, we cuts have are coming from. We've already signed up, Pierce, and you should know this if you've read the treaty, we've already signed up to a 1% target. The only change is we're shifting from a 1% target to a half percent target well, over the business side. I mean, I it said makes that, a very small small. It makes a very small difference. It is not a six billion difference. It's not a six billion difference. It's a 750 million difference if you wanted to estimate it. It's not. You know, and this figure of six billion has been peddled throughout the campaign, uh, like so many other things have been peddled through the campaign that aren't true. Well, there are lots of things that are peddled on both sides that aren't true. So, uh, but you wanted to make a point. I just wanted to make a point that this, this uh, document was actually downloaded just before I came into the studio here from the Department of Finance. It says in Annex Three that this estimated structural deficit of your government uh, in 2015 is going to be minus uh, 3.7 so you'll be 3.2 sh uh, short and compared to the present levels of your budget that's actually 6 billion yes but euros. we're already so we're already committed the point is we're already committed to move to a 1% deficit that is what we're committed to that and the only change the only change that, that, that this this treaty is introducing that that 1% is moving to no, the only no, change no, the this difference is not we have this country this, to Luxembourg. That's this, the change here. This country has already recognised that we need prudent approach to public finances. And, and prudent is that having, the judges and, have and no, to let, let him finish his point, yeah. We we need to have a prudent approach to public finances because twice in my lifetime Politicians have destroyed this country by reckless spending, by reckless pursuit of economic policy. We need this. This is not something that we need fear. Something that's about prudent budgeting for the future and having stability well, in the way we fund it. This is absolutely correct. If Richard, if, if, Richard, if Richard could point out which rule in this treaty would have prevented the economic collapse in 2008, which rule? Not one of the rules in this treaty would no, have prevented it. Let me finish, Richard. Let me finish, well, Richard. No, you're asking because me a question. Then you want to let me ask finish the question? Yeah, but let me point. Point this. In 2008, Ireland complied with every single one of these rules. Indeed, in the European Commission were the cheerleaders of Ireland. They were directing other European countries, the accession states, to come to Ireland to look at our model. The IMF cheerleaded Ireland. This is not the solution for Ireland's, uh, Ireland's crisis. It is not the solution for European crisis. And it will hurt jobs in Ireland. It will hurt people in Ireland. And it will hurt jobs in Ireland as well because not only is this going to affect Ireland, but it will affect Europe where we will see further contraction and will, it will deny us an opportunity to export into our main trading partners. And that's the reality of it. You, you may be happy with the fact that on top of the Troika target of 8.6 billion euro of additional cuts that you're already signed up to the other 6 billion on top of it. But what people are really concerned about out there, Richard, is the, is the 440,000 people unemployed, the 9 people every hour that are immigrating, the 91 people that are falling into mortgage distress every, every year. They can't afford additional austerity, either coming from this treaty or what you've signed up with European partners. And you may be happy to tie your own hands to it, but I'm not happy for you or anybody else to tie other future governments' hands to set uh, to okay. comply with yeah, this rules. Yeah, let me answer that one. Richard, let we have to let Patricia have no, I, want to, I want to answer. Ah, that. You can answer, but let Patricia in first. Patricia. Okay. 
Okay, well, as the only actual business person at this table who will be the generator of growth, can I assure you that as far as the business community is concerned, and that's not just the Small Firms Association, 76 business organisations throughout the country, everybody of note has said that a yes vote is imperative in this treaty. Now, that's business everybody people who are, who are... Everybody of note? All the major organisations, 76 organisations. people who are not of note? What have they said? So the 76 leading organisations in the country have said that they are in support of this treaty in terms of uh, the reasons why. Both the multinational sector and small business people have analysed it. We have a series of video blogs, quotes from member companies all around the country that say that essentially, in their view, this is critical okay. for confidence, argument, for control and for investment. Against the proposition that, first of all, that, that a, if we're moving towards a fiscal union, our, the, the corporation's profit tax uh, regime that we have here would be endangered. And give arguments against mm. the point that as raised mm. by Pierce that this commits us in a way to an austerity process even more definitively than is already in place. Well okay firstly if you want to zoom in on this it's one line but it's from the Irish Tax Institute which is the body that understands tax in this country. Absolute experts. They have said the EU Stability Treaty will not affect Ireland's role in setting its own taxes. There is no tax implication in this treaty. But we, uh, yes, can't get we, we can get We that. can all agree with that. Absolutely. But that is not the point that Martin has made. It is. It's, it isn't. He's His linking point, this. No, I'm sorry. He's I, linking CCTB uh, uh, with the treaty. Uh, please, it's please, absolutely please, clear. Please. CCTB has nothing whatsoever to if do I with this If I understand treaty. him correctly, the point he's making is that yes, there isn't anything specific in the fiscal treaty to do with the corporation profit tax, but that the drift towards, but that Mario Draghi has said that this is a step towards the fiscal union and in a fiscal union almost certainly there will be harmonisation of uh, corporations profit tax. That's his yes. argument. No. We are aware that for many years now we have been fighting the common consolidated corporation tax base proposal at the EU. There is a division of opinion on this but nowhere in no discussion has it ever talked about the tax rate. It is purely about the tax base. That's a very different matter and certainly the Irish veto over those uh, proposals the government have been very clear would be used if necessary. No, the government Where hasn't it? been clear that there. The government has been clear that they'll use the veto in relation to co in the corporation tax, but in a motion... That's what I just uh, said. Uh, no, you said the CCCTB. Uh, the no. government, in terms of the CCCTB, has said that they're engaging... What's CCTB? Mm. It's the Common yeah. Consolidated yeah, they, 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 Do people's heads in uh, using those kind of anagrams? What, what, say what it will entirely yeah. change the no. way that companies pay tax in the future. Let him explain. He's, right, used a, he's used it, an anagram it, it, which most people have It's not about changing the amount of tax that a company will pay, but it will change the way that a company pays the tax for a company that's set up here in Ireland that exports to other countries. Then they, they, Ireland will not be able to benefit of the, the tax that we're getting at the, this present time. Other countries, because they're exporting, say, to Germany, they will get a share of the tax. Once the Irish government is, has not said it will use its veto. They're actually engaging constructively with, the other, with their European partners on that measure. So just for, for, for the, the the truth, the truth is, of course, that many European countries oppose that Absolutely. approach. And let's get back to the basic question you raised. You say you're concerned about the unemployed. And you're concerned about public services. But according to your strategy of voting no on this treaty, we will have no money, we will have no source of guaranteed money at the end of next year. How are you going to pay? How are you going to fund our budgets at the end of next year on your strategy? You believe that you're, you're at the heart of Europe, at the heart of decision making. The blackmail clause, which is, the, which is in the preamble of the text, which actually uh, 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 disputes what the premise of the ESM is, which is stability in the Eurozone. If you're so at the heart of Europe, easily you'll be able to remove the blackmail clause. But you also have. Look at You will also. You will also. You can okay. just rewrite the treaty. We know, and one of the features of this treaty is that this is not like the Lisbon but Treaty. Can we I cannot I vote against this and say, well, everyone else is held up until Ireland comes into line. The truth is that this is an agreement with countries. We have succeeded in getting the big, strong countries like Germany to put in place a rescue fund that's available for, for so countries yeah, that are, are vulnerable. And that rescue and you're fund saying, will not. You're saying you will vote no, no and cut ourselves no, off. That from rescue that. fund will that not. 
means you will not be able to fund our public no, services no, next no. year. No, no, no. The ESM will provide will money because the ESM will have no is legal treaty status. The, the referendum no legal treaty commission, status. the referendum let commission has made it clear that just, if just, we uh, vote, uh, the referendum. Let me finish. Uh, this uh, is, this is the third of nonsense. Ah, Richard, didn't come on. Let him reply. Don't talk across. You have to. But you have to nail down on truth. You've made. You've nailed down. I had to believe it to be untruth. Every time I speak, Vincent, you you want to protect Richard Pierce. Richard, I think when you have a look back, you've, you're doing better than anybody else in terms of, of uh, sucking up time and the programme so far. Look, it's, uh, it's very uh, simple. Yes. The ESM, which isn't established at this point in time, can go ahead without Ireland's veto. Ireland doesn't have a veto on the ESM. What we do have a veto on and what Europe needs as a permanent bailout mechanism of 700 billion euro is it needs to have legal protection under the treaties. Well, and what? let me just finish, Richard, for God's sake. And we have a veto on that matter in the Irish Parliament through Article 136. Now, I want to put the question to you, it, because it's up to the Irish people to decide which way they vote on the 31st. I hope they vote no. What if they do vote no? What are you as a government going to do? Are you going to allow that treaty to go ahead, allow the blackmail clause to exist, or will you say, go back to your European partners and say, listen, the Irish people have voted no. We can't ratify this treaty because it would, it would actually prevent us from having money, if we're to believe you, from the ESM. So therefore, we're asking you to take the blackmail clause out. And if they tell you to go, to go and sort off, what would happen? Ireland I, would I, have no money, and it would cause cr cr huge contagion within the European Union. And do you really think that you're, uh, the other political leaders across Europe are going to do that? Okay. They have enough let, problems let, let, without let, dealing let, with let, this. Look, the truth is, Ireland uh, does not have funding beyond the end of next year. We have now succeeded in this treaty in getting Germany, France, and all of the other countries to contribute to a, 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 a major fund that is available, a standby fund available for countries who need funding, who are in difficulties. Bailout. And this, this is a fund that has been put in place. For, for, for months and months we have been looking for Europe to create the sort of fund that would be a firewall to protect us. Now, Pierce and his party says, now that we've succeeded in getting that fund there, that we have the opportunity to have certainty as to how we will fund ourselves 2014 and beyond, that we can continue to build a recovery, continue to attract foreign investment. He is advising the Irish people to say, no, cut ourselves off from that fund, no, cut ourselves no. off from the ability to continue to have no, foreign no, investment investing in Ireland because of the certainty. And he is saying that something will turn up if we vote no. Don't tell me what I'm we, saying, just I answer, no, the, no, question. No, 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 answer I, the question. I'm answering the question. I'm, 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 I'm answering the okay. question just as you people have okay. you you, you made your point. Uh, Richard's point is, is uh, if I might uh, try to summarise it, is that uh, we, we almost certainly will need, well he hasn't said this but it's true, almost certainly we need funding in 2000, 2014 yeah. and that if we were to veto the very fund that we hope to be funded by in 2014, we're cutting off our nose to spite our face. This well, is madness. First of all, I agree. That's his point. I agree with I agree with the fact that unless we change direction, we will need a second bailout. That's uh, in my view, and I've been saying that for the last year because the politics of austerity okay. that Richard and no, his part, uh, government part. are falling is, is leading this country into recession. <laughs> the CSO has said we're officially in recession now because of the last two quarters. The point is here, Sinn Féin support the idea of an emergency fund in Europe. We support an emergency fund in Europe. We would like it to be backed by but the ECB. You're advising people to vote against Richard, for God's sake, let the listeners please listen to me uh, for just for a minute. For a minute, just uh, without interruptions, right? Because if people are, 35% people are undecided. Maybe this, this debate might allow one or two to, to, to decide which way to come down. We, we support the idea of an emergency fund in Europe. What we're not, what not saying is that we don't want an emergency fund in Europe. What we're saying is that the Irish people reject this, that there is an onus on our government to go back and remove the blackmail clause. A blackmail clause that didn't exist in the first draft of this treaty or the second or the third draft of the treaty. A blackmail clause that was enter in, entered in at the very end of the treaty and which actually conflicts <laughs> with the premise yes, of the treaty. Yes, may, I, may I put a question to you about yeah. this? That the only way that we could do that would be by refusing to ratify the ESM, the establishment of the very bailout fund that we hope to get money from. Yeah. 
and it, we, we, we couldn't go back and, uh, and simply try to negotiate a particular clause in it. We'd have to, uh, we, we would have to, the failure to ratify it would collapse the no, whole the, thing. It, now, yeah. and it doesn't need our vote, it doesn't need would, our vote to, would, to assess that it. That we would collapse the whole thing. No, I'm saying that, that, because this is the point that you're missing. When you have a veto, and Sinn Féin are in government in the north, and we have a veto as the DUP has, it's the threat of the veto that is enough. You basically go back and you say that we have a veto in terms of establishing the ESA with a legal treaty basis, Here's and we will use that legal treaty basis. What would be the point? What would be the point? What would be the point? What you are proposing is a complete leap into the dark. You're just like tossing with people's futures. Not at all. If you look at how we have analysed this, as in the entrepreneurs, the business people who employ 1.8 million people, we're looking for something that will guarantee us a future. Essentially, what we're looking at the ESM to to be is to be an insurance policy. It's very important that that is in place. Without it, then our entry back into the markets is seriously questionable. Without that, we can't take back control of our own affairs, which does involve some growth policies. And certainly, that's something that we're campaigning for. And I think it's realistic that we do need to have sensible rules to balance our budget. Everyone has agreed on that. And it has to happen. And we've already signed up to much of this. But I think also, I think the key thing is just about economic stability. I have member companies at the moment who want to invest. Even even just pending the outcome of this referendum, they're postponing that. That means people don't uh, have new jobs that might be created. And certainly, I think, in terms of going forward, too much focus is on the public finances. It's only 20% of the economy. We need to focus on the 80% that will drive growth. And in the assessment of those people, <coughs> business leaders, a yes vote will deliver what is required in order to return our economy okay, to work. Okay, Yeah, well, that, I just have to bring a news flash in here because nobody really knows what's going to happen with the ESM, with the fiscal treaty since Hollande has become president. He has announced that he's going to renegotiate the entire thing. No, he has Germany. not. He, 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 he has absolutely he has said that. He has said, said that. that. He has said 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 In Germany, they have postponed the ratification because of political uncertainty. Greece is falling apart. It's maybe even through the summer leave the Euro. In, in Italy, Monty has declared that the falling, uh, at, that the country is uh, being torn apart because of the euro. I mean, the uncertainty about uh, about what this treaty actually is going to contain is so immense that you have no idea. Then, second point here, and that's that a crucial, this, that's this, a crucial, this treaty crucial is point. Causing this uncertainty, is that your point? The euro is the euro construction yeah, this, what's is causing. What has to do with this, tre this treaty then? Because this is going to prolong, and this is going to be the fiscal foundation, you can say, for, for 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 prolonging the project of the euro. I mean. The euro is going to go collapse uh, inevitably, uh, beginning in Greece. Then, I mean, look at look at Spain. Look at look 25, 25 percent unemployment in Spain. F Italy is falling apart. I mean, the entire uh, the entire eurozone is cracking here. So, but the point is that <laughs> when speaking of the ESM, which is not the one that you have to vote on, you're concerned about funding your budget in 2014. Well, let's talk about the financing the ESM. You have to pay in July coming here 250 million to the ESM. In October, 250 million euro to the ESM. There is no guarantee that Ireland will get money from the ESM. There's no legal guarantee whatsoever if you read it. The only guarantee there is, is you'd have to pay. So the only guarantee when Italy collapses, when Spain collapses, is that ta Irish taxpayers will be paying for bailing out banks in Italy, banks in Spain, their public budget, but there's no guarantee whatsoever okay. that there'll be money yeah. left when your government needs them. Look, the truth is that more Morgan and his party, as Pierce and his party, has opposed every development within I'm Europe from, from, from the very establishment of Europe, from the very establishment of Europe right through. We've been told <coughs> by parties like these that <coughs> Europe would bring disaster to the Irish country. The truth is that Ireland has built a successful economy for many years by being able to bring investors, by being able to access markets, to build a strong economy with access to Europe. Now, can we be? But you will oppose. You, you will oppose. You will oppose. You will oppose. We have created more jobs than we have destroyed. Please, 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 not. We want to see a strong eurozone capable of handling its own crisis. How do you think this it's going? treaty, this treaty, is one element in that protection. We need a, a fund. It's the same song can, we've heard for ten <coughs> years: yeah, stability, uh, growth, jobs. Just we follow your way. Well, we've got only had the opposite. Well, Ireland has, opposite. you know, Ireland since since we joined the Europe, we, uh, the European 
union we've created 800,000 extra jobs. Mm. That has been a very significant. Yes, we have lost jobs as a result of bad decision making, as a result of bad decision making in this country. <laughs> and the bad decision making was about governments becoming dependent on a construction sector and a banking sector that ran amok. Because and as a result, in, that has seen a collapse of our revenue. We need to rebuild our economy on a successful model with access to Europe. Uh, a, this uh, letter that I think she's sending to, some, to the Irish Times tomorrow. And she raises the issue in, in this letter of you voted against the adoption of a protocol which would strengthen the protection of the Irish corporation tax rate. You've, you voted against this protocol. Is that right? I don't know which vote that might be. It has to be more specific. You know, for the, we vote thousands and thousands of protocols and, and votes in the European Parliament. This is a protocol that, that, that was that attached, protocol, I think, to the Lisbon Treaty. Is it the, uh, the Thyssen report? Uh, or uh, that, what is it? that was attached to the Lisbon Treaty, I think. Uh, a protocol that, that um, right, now I know, yes. immunized... Uh, immunise Ireland right, against right. any changes to the corporation yes, tax yes. regime. I, I, now I know exactly which one we're talking yes. about, simply because the wording was too vague. It was in the C Constitutional Affairs Committee, which I am uh, vice chairing, and uh, we had a huge dispute whether the wording of the report should be in the one way or the other way. There is a great majority of the Parliament that doesn't want, to, the European Parliament, that doesn't want to have strong wording on it. And actually, right now, we see the consequence of it, because it was actually promised that uh, with the Croatia accession treaty, uh, the protocol about the uh, insurance of the, uh, the Irish fiscal system should be included. I have read, not carefully, but I have read the accession treaty here on Croatia, and Mr. Minister, it's not mentioned one, at one place at all. The entire protocol is, is, is not in this, uh, in this document. This is where the Council said that they will ensure your, uh, your independence on the fiscal matters. The, the, protocol, is, the protocol is being the ratified protocol, this week. But it's not, here. But it's not the in the document. But the protocol is being signed by the different countries this week as we speak. And I think at, uh, already 24 have signed up to it. And, and there's what a will happen then still to, when the to other member states oh, sorry, you, you, let, let me finish. You, 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 you say producing like a rabbit out of the hat that some fact that it's not in the Croatian well, you treaty. Signed it. No, you but we, signed we it, have. I can tell you categorically that we have a protocol that has been signed by 24 of the member states and it will move to completion. And that will be a legal document well, of the European community and it's clearly a document that, that you, right. op you oppose to but from an Irish perspective it's very important that we protect our corporate tax I, rate and because I, we want to build a successful recovery and we want to see this treaty as another element of that so we need a growth strategy and our growth strategy is built around our, our uh, pro-business environment about right. our uh, capacity to attract foreign enterprise and contrary to what you said we created 13,000 jobs last year in foreign enterprise and we only lost a small well, number. Well. So that was the best decade for uh, the best year for a decade well, for investment in Ireland by foreign companies. You can always so, the statistic, you know, our but, <laughs> but our policies are working. Not working fast enough, a lot more work to be Richard. done. But one thing that is very clear, if we reject this treaty and create the uncertainty that that would cause for investors, create mm -hmm. the uncertainty it would cause for ourselves funding our public services <coughs> beyond Funny. the end of next year, we will have done ourselves okay. immense uh, damage. We've we got to go to a break in a moment, but before we go to a break, Richard, can I just ask you this question? Uh, question that Article 3 of the uh, Treaty on the Function of the European Union states categorically that the uh, European Union shall have sole responsibility for a number of things including uh, the Euro. How then can uh, separate, uh, separate treaties be entered into that have responsibilities for the Euro such as the Fiscal Treaty? Well, this is a treaty among 26 of the 27 member states, so it's a different from the, f the form of the other treaties. So, so that it, and as, a, as a result of that, uh, your countries can proceed. We, we're not in a veto situation, because if it was an EU I, treaty, I know, we would have a veto. Can, so if we can, said no to this treaty, this there could be but how other could, countries would sure, be how can, how can a treaty that has nothing to do with the European Union, which is the fiscal treaty, how can that treaty have any responsibility for the euro? How can the fiscal treaty have any responsibility for the euro since Article 3 of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union states that the EU should have sole responsibility for the Because it is an euro. international treaty between 26 member states. It's an international treaty. And it's it's provided, it has provided so, for so the So you're riding roughshod over an existing treaty of the European Union. No, this commit, as you see, if you 
you read it, it commits the members of the European Union to work together to promote growth, employment and competitiveness. That's what it, 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 it commits. It is, it is the 26 members coming together to <coughs> do certain things to deliver <coughs> more <coughs> stability. I, I, are you familiar in with the point I'm ra uh, raising? And, uh, are you familiar? Maybe it's unfair to push you on this because it's, um, it, it, it may not have occurred to you so far. But there is, uh, there is this provision in the uh, Article 3 of the Treaty on the Function of the European Union states absolutely categorically the sole, it uses the word, sole responsibility for the euro should be the European Union. No, but this is not, this, what this is saying is that members, the 26 member states, are making certain undertakings. As you know, the, the UK is not one of those. And it commits the, European, the, the members but, of the eurozone to do certain things. Yes, in and respect it, of the euro. To in, no, in, the respect, in respect yes. of coordinating their policies, it, in respect it, of it, their it, budgetary uh, policies, it, in respect it, it, of it, it, a, our protection fund. Anyway. Uh, there seems to me there's a legal problem here. Um, I, insofar as I understand it, there's well, a legal you're, problem. You're the here. lawyer, but no, I think, I, you know, at this stage, event, at this there's, stage there's, three there's, countries have already ratified yeah, this. Yeah, We're on the way to ratification yeah. right across the 26 yeah, yeah, member yeah, states. Yeah, exactly. And your, they, they, your own they, Minister for uh, Finance uh, today, right. today told journalists at Bloomberg <laughs> that no member state in the Euro, if they had a popular vote, would, re would ratify this here, bar Ireland. That's well, what he said. The, the no, the no the who, said, who said this? Minister Noonan told Bloomberg journalists today that none of the 17 member states bar Ireland would ratify this if it went to referendum. That's one of his <laughs> bullish comments that he was making today. All right, very okay, private. we're going to go to a break. We're after the break, we'll continue the discussion after the break, and also we'll deal with tomorrow morning's news for us, join us then. Welcome back. Let's go straight to tomorrow morning's newspapers. We start with the front page of the Irish Independent and it leads with pressure on yes vote as 35% still to decide. Poll reveals big challenge for Kenny and Gilmore to swing don't knows. In the Irish Times, precedent set by cut to fees in Reynolds' libel case, Matthew McGrath calls for RT Chairman's resignation, a decision by the High Court taxing master to reduce the fees of solicitor who acted for Father Kevin Reynolds by almost 70% is likely to, to set an important precedent for future decisions on legal costs. Over on the right, fears uh, Greek turmoil could spark run on banks. In the Irish uh, Sun, uh, men in jacks uh, married Obama guard caught out at coppers. Um, the uh, Irish examiner, millions lost in needless stadium legal row. Uh, public, uh, the the Committee of Public Accounts report criticises agencies and departments for wasting money. Uh, in the Irish Daily Star, they pointed a gun at me, uh, my uh, at my uh, year at my year old son. A double murder suspect said that he was forced to kill two pals after thugs pointed a gun at his one-year-old son. A court held heard yesterday. In the Irish Daily Mail. Over 2,000 cases in 12 months and it's getting worse. Superbugs infect six patients a day in our hospitals. Financial Times Cameron to spell out fears of Eurozone unravelling. And we finally get to the Guardian. A trillion, a thousand billion. Governments prepare for worst as massive costs of Greek Euro exit emerges. And it leads with um, the government was last night making urgent preparations um, to cope with the, that's the British government, I'm sorry, I just lost it there. And uh, to cope, um, uh, the government was last night making urgent preparations to cope with the fallout of a possible Greek exit from the single currency after the governor of the Bank of England, Mervyn King, warned that Europe was tearing itself apart. Reports from Athens that massive sums of money were being spirited out of the country intensified concerns in Whitehall about the impact of a splintering of the Eurozone on a UK economy that is stuck in double recession. One estimate put the cost of the Eurozone Greek um, making a dis uh, of Eurozone of Greece making an, a disorderly exit from the currency at one trillion euro. That's five percent of output. Um, if it's anything like that, which it is disaster for all of Europe. Yeah, I mean clearly um, it shows you know the max massive exit of capital that is following on from the uncertainty that's being created in Greece, and I think it it is very clear that the only way that we can manage this crisis is if the euro countries work together, and I think it underlines the importance of a treaty where countries commit to work together to resolve the crisis that faces the eurozone. 
A lot of people are asking, why don't we postpone the, uh, the, treaty, the ratification of the treaty, or the, why don't we postpone this referendum until we know f uh, more clearly what the implications will involve? Well, I think the Referendum Commission has made it very clear that the only way in which you could postpone this referendum is by having a general election. And that's, we are certainly I, not I, going to have amazing, that. amazing. Although, no, because you can always have Okay, uh, that's it for now. For more tonight's program, log on to tv3.e. The weather's next. Good night.